this is a quick follow-up to the video yesterday on the two aspects of the spirit um, you know if you've been brought up in a charismatic environment and you are feeling pressure or frustration regarding this aspect of the gifts of the spirit um, you know, here's the way you can know that enem the enemy is harassing you about it and not the Lord. Um, first of all, the Lord gives the spirit without cost. He says, drink freely of the water of life, right? Um, come by uh, without money. It is a, f everything is a free gift and grace, okay? So, there's that. Um, now, the problem is when people can shut you up to frustration, they can do it by telling you, you've got to have this thing. And then they'll say, you need to wait on God, or you need to be more holy, or you need to be more this or that. And you'll focus all your effort into exhausting yourself, seeking out why you don't have this thing. Now, I told you in the last video that holiness doesn't come from the gifts. It comes from the essential spirit, the life within us. And that life flows by the faith in the gospel. And we're going to get to that in Galatians. I'm going back to Galatians uh, later this afternoon. Um, the life we received has everything we need. And we are complete in Christ. We are complete in that life, lacking nothing. And... The thing is, you say, well, they all say that this gifts of the Spirit totally made a difference in their life. Well, you have to look at what are they saying that it did for them. And what you'll find is that they are boasting. They may not even know it. But anyone who tells you that they're more clear or more anything is making an opposite boast of what we make in the New Testament because in the New Testament we are not more we're less so our boast in grace is not what has been added to us to make us something but how we have been reduced so that Christ can be everything and that's called boasting in the cross of Christ and that's what Paul talks about in Galatians again God forbid that I boast in anything but the cross of Christ through whom the world is crucified to me and I to the world, right? And then in 2 Corinthians, or no, the 1 Corinthians, he said, I'm determined to know nothing among you but Christ and him crucified. And Paul's whole thing, and in Philippians, every, every book that Paul wrote almost has a passage where you see him make a big announcement about his boasting. And he compares it to the boasting of others. Because in 1 Corinthians, the false apostles boasted about their gifts of the Spirit. And they spoke in great powerful words and their rhetoric and their even the miracles. All of those things were used as boasts to say, here, look how much more spiritual I am because I did this and I have this. And that's why you need to follow me right? Well, the opposite is true of Paul, who said, I boast in my weaknesses. And there was this one section, I can't is it 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians? I'm getting confused. Where he says, okay, you want to boast? Here, I'll boast. I was in foolishness. I was in weakness. I was in shipwrecks. I was stoned. I was persecuted. I was cast out of this city and that city. And I was shipped. You know, I mean, he just goes on and on and on with all the calamitous things that happened to him for the ministry. And now, you know, typically the ones who will want you to have something that you supposedly don't have, they'll promise you blessings. And when they say, you say, well, what did it do for you? They'll say, they'll talk about how it blessed their life. Well, this is, you don't, when you, when Paul's done with his list of things he's boasting in, you don't want any of it. You don't want the portion Paul had. Okay. That was the Lord's call on his life and nobody wants it. You might want something like Peter's, 
you know, oh, he had a vision, oh, he did a miracle, oh, he, he prophesied, oh, that's all spectacular, thousands of people came. Paul was rejected everywhere he went, all the churches turned away from him, uh, he was called a false prophet, prophet false po apostle, accusations followed him everywhere he went, and stonings and persecutions on top of his own weaknesses. But he learned to glory in weakness so that the power of Christ would tabernacle on him. And that power was manifested. Yes, there were miracles and signs that were the signature of his apostleship. He did have those. But his ministry was deeper than that. It was a revel. I, we can barely even know what his ministry was because it was so deep, you know. You can't compare yourself to that. And yet he kind of cut a path for us that is all about the cross and all about being reduced. So when you're in an environment where everybody's boasting about their spiritual gifts, no matter how, even if they seem really humble and they're trying to help you, if they're not pointing you to Christ and making you know that you're complete in him and they're telling you that they received something that made them better or bigger, or more strong, or more clear. There is a problem. They're not as clear as they think. Because a clear person in grace learns only to boast of the cross. And I used to be, I'm charismatic, you know, so I pray in tongues. I don't pray in tongues as much as I used to, to be honest. Why, I don't know. You know, the Bible doesn't really tell us. There's speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. Speaking in tongues requires an interpreter. You see speaking in tongues in Acts 2. And that's for actually assigned to the unbelievers and for the announcing of the gospel. Then there is um, praying in tongues. And praying in tongues isn't always languages that men know. It could be languages of angels. Paul says, when I pray in an unknown tongue, my understanding is unfruitful. In other words, my mind does not know what I'm praying. But my spirit is edified and my spirit prays mysteries unto God. There is, and so he prayed in tongues. He said, I'll pray in tongues and I'll pray with my understanding. I'll sing in tongues. I'll sing in my, with my spirit and I'll sing with my understanding. So there's something you do with your spirit in uh, praying in tongues that is edifying. And Paul needed that. You know, and it's a gift uh, that God gives freely. You know, does everybody have it? Not necessarily. Uh, does everybody need it? I don't know. You know, I do I even understand why I have the gifts and how it's benefited me? I cannot tell you how that gift has benefited me. I used to have an answer. I used to say, oh, well, I see much more in the Word because I pray in tongues. And, oh, I am much more able to do X, Y, Z. I can release my spirit and stuff like that because I pray in tongues. I don't know. Honestly, my understanding is unfruitful. So if I were to say that I understood what the benefit of that gift was... I, I didn't, my, the more under, the more my understanding is clear. In other words, my focus has been brought to Christ and to the cross and to grace and to the gospel and to those sorts of things that I see in everybody who enjoys what I, anybody who's ever said amen to anything that I've been saying in these videos and you fellowship a little bit, you find out, hey, we have this in common. And I don't go, I wonder if they pray in tongues. It doesn't even occur to me. And yet it's interesting because these charismatics, you know, that's the first thing they do. They're like, well, do you pray in tongues? Does he pray in tongues? You know, and yet I can, you can fellowship with anybody who believes the gospel and will say amen to God's record. Whether or not they've got this or not. And, you know, so like I said, you are complete in Christ. You have everything you need in him. If God chooses to give you another gift, fine. You know, don't think about what your gift is. What you do is you think about the gospel and you think about how can I share it. And you think about how can I help others understand the gospel. And you know what? That'll lead you right down the path of love. Is your heart will go out to people. 
And then gifts will manifest and you won't know they're manifesting. It's a much more unconscious thing. You don't fill out a grid that says, well, here's my aptitude and here's what I can do and here's... No, that's not the way. The way is to focus on the gospel. That will bring out your function and focus on helping others get free. First, get yourself free. And that is pursue the truth and find out about your inheritance. What do I have in Christ? What has God done for me? Am I really clear about that? Because the ones who are talking about their gifts and everything, they're not even clear in many cases what God did for them in Christ. They don't even know their inheritance. So that gift, what is that going to do? You know, it just puffs you up, especially if you're ignorant. So it's better to not have any gifts that you know of except the gift, which is the gospel. <laughs> and the gospel brings you the spirit. If you get to a point where you know how to rejoice in the gospel, you've got everything you need. You will be filled with the Spirit. Uh, you know, Paul talked about being filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Does that require a supernatural gift? No, but it'll fill you with the Spirit. Have you ever sung the book of Philippians to yourself? Have you ever sung the first few cha verses of the uh, best chapter in the Bible, which is Ephesians chapter 1, just sing it to the Lord and turn it into prayer. You'll see. You'll be filled with, you'll say, well, how, am I being filled with the Spirit? How do I know? Well, you'll be happy. How's that? Let's focus on the joy that the gospel brings to us. And let's focus on believing the gospel. And then let's help others enter into that faith and enter into a rest and as we do that we'll be refreshed and gifts will flow out and we won't even know what's happening because it's just unconscious you're just doing what you do and there's all kinds of different gifts and don't get so hung up on the book of acts the book of acts was a startlingly strong manifestation of the spirit for the inauguration of the church on the earth in a way that was going to make a splash and reach all the way to Caesar's household. It was going to turn the world upside down. Now the gospel has been with us for 2,000 years and it has done a mighty work and it has left its print everywhere, okay? Everybody, really, everybody has had a chance to hear the gospel. Now they may have shut their mind to it or whatever, but the word has multiplied and been published. So what the Lord needs now is not a mighty group of heroes to turn the world upside down from Jerusalem, but a humble group of people who are waiting for his coming and have been hidden in him while the storm passes over. We're not standing up boldly in Jerusalem shouting to the ends of the earth. We are being hidden in the Lord, being prepared for the indignation to pass, right? We're finding our hiding place. So this is a time not for manifestation. I, you know, not everybody might agree with me on that, but I, I believe that eventually uh, the cross-centered theology of a grace person will give them a desire to be hidden more than seen. Not only hidden uh, to as a protection, because you realize how weak and mortal and frail you are because you're a grace person so you don't have a boast in your own strength but also hidden from manifestation because you know that you could be carried off as spoiled just by being exalted because you know what like you know I've got 280 I've got 280 YouTube subscribers and I every time I do one of these messages I'll lose like five. <laughs> I'll gain one or two overnight and then I'll see it goes down to, you know, it's fine. I mean, 280 is beyond my wildest dreams anyway. And, uh, but, you know, it, what if I had 150,000? Who knows what I would turn into? I'd be making my James two prayer claws and all. I mean, you know, that. When I do that pastor so-and-so, I wouldn't be able to spin it out like that if I didn't have something in me that could recognize what that is, right? So we just have to hide ourselves because this is not the day of our power. We are looking for him to be manifested. We say, Lord, please keep me near to you. Keep me hidden in you. All right. Amen. I'll talk to you later.